Hello again, class. Uh, to continue on in this objective, we could apply what we learned in the last video to real-world situations. So, if you're ever given a situation where there's a constant rate of change, which means it's a linear situation, and you're given some data about that situation, what you can do is you can create an equation. So, in this situation, we have a slope which is our M, and we're given a coordinate point. On the sixth day, we've sold a total of 23 mixtapes. So let's just read through the question real quick. So Mark is selling his latest mixtapes. He's selling them at a constant rate of three per day. On the sixth day, he has sold 23 total. Write an equation representing the situation. So right off the bat, my instinct was just to figure out what we had. We were given a slope which is an M, we are given an X and a Y, otherwise known as an dependent and independent variable. And now we can create an equation for the situation. And we just follow the same exact process from before. So we know that when we write the equation of a line, we should automatically be thinking Y equals MX plus B. And in this situation, we're given a slope, which is 3, and we're given an X and a Y. And we can just plug those values in. And now we can solve for our missing piece was, what did he start off with? How many had Mark already sold? Kind of like pre-sale or whatever it was. Um, so now we just solve for B. 3 times 6 is 18. Subtract 18 from both sides. Okay, so that means to start, Mark had already sold five of his mixtapes. So that is our initial value, or our B, or Y-intercept. So now we can create our equation, Y equals 3X plus 5. So in context, which is what that is, when, like when we're using our math in a real situation, uh, what that would mean is we're selling three mixtapes every day, X values would be days, how many days are going by. And since we started off at 5 already sold, we have plus 5. And that would be the solution or the equation to that situation. Here's another example of a linear situation in context. So let's read through the question. So we have the local water supply has a leak. It is losing 4 gallons of water every second. After 15 seconds, the water level is at 1,024 gallons. Write an equation representing the situation. So if I think real quickly, um, it's losing 4 gallons of water every second. What that right there is implying is that we have a constant rate of change. Every single second that goes by, 4 more gallons. Another second, 4 more gallons. Another second, 4 more gallons. That's a constant rate of change, which indicates that this is a linear situation. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and label that M. That's my slope. So my slope is 4, and 4 gallons per minute. I'm sorry, 4 gallons per second. And we're also given some information. After 15 seconds, the water level is at 1,024 gallons. So those would be our our variables. Those are the things that are changing in the situation. As time is changing, um, our water level is going down farther and farther and farther. Um, so almost 99.9% .9 of the time, time is going to be your x value. It is independent of anything else. So that's your independent variable. So our x value will be 15 and our y value the number that depends on how much time has gone by our water level is 1,024. That'll be our y value for that point in time. So we have an x value, we have a y value, we have a slope. If we want to write the equation, as soon as you hear equation of a line, you should be automatically thinking y equals mx plus b. Now we just plug in the information that we have in the problem. Our y value was 1,024. Our slope was 4 gallons per minute, and our x value was 15. So what we're trying to find here to create the equation of the situation is, well, where did the local water supply start at? 
So we solve for b. And if we just go ahead and do that, we'll do 4 times 15. And 4 times 15 is 60. Get rid of that 60 to get b by itself. So we will subtract 60 on both sides. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. What I'd like you to quickly do is go ahead and find my mistake. What did I do wrong? Right, so when we said that the slope was 4, our slope is actually negative 4. We're losing 4 gallons, so this should be negative 4. So every second that goes by, we're losing 4 gallons, so minus 4. Now let's go ahead. So negative 4 times 15 is negative 60. And now to get rid of that negative 60, we have to add 60 to both sides. And that makes sense because if we're losing as we go, if we're losing 4 gallons every minute as we go, to get back to where we started, we would, want, we would want to add 60. So that means in that first 15 seconds, we lost 60 gallons of water. So we would want to add that back to, to see where we started. So we have 1,084 gallons as our y-intercept, or our starting value. So in the beginning of the situation, the water supply was at 1,084 gallons. And we're losing 4 gallons every minute. So our equation, I'm sorry, every second, y equals negative 4x plus 1,084. And that would be the equation that would represent that situation. All right, here's our last problem. I'd like you to go ahead and try to identify the important information in this problem that you can use to write the equation of the situation. So let's read this together. Anthony is selling lemonade for $2 per cup. After he had sold 34 cups, he had made $56. Write an equation representing the situation. So go ahead, pause the video, identify the inf information that you think will be useful, and then go ahead and try to create the equation if you think you're ready. Okay, so um, what you should have identified, first of all, was the $2 per cup. So that's a constant rate of change. So every single cup, $2. So one more cup, $2. One more cup, $2. Okay, that constant rate of change is going to give us a linear situation. And as soon as we hear linear situation, a linear equation, we should be thinking y equals mx plus b. So we know that the slope is going to be $2 per cup. And then they give us uh, a coordinate point. After 34 cups, he had made $56. So the dependent variable in this situation is going to be how much money has he made. That depends on how many cups he sold. So the x value is going to be 34 cups. And the y value that depends on the independent value will be $56. So our coordinate point that they give us, 34 cups, $56. So that's our x and our y value that we can use to create our equation. So to create our equation, obviously, we need to figure out how much money did he start off with. So we'll do y equals mx plus b. Our y value is 56. Our slope is 2. Our x value is 34 plus b. So we solve by multiplying 2 times 34, getting b by itself. So we have 68 plus b equals 56. And now I subtract 68 from both sides. And that gives us a y-intercept, or a starting value, of negative 12. I want, to think, I want you to think for a second. Pause the video and, and ask yourself, why is that value negative? Why does it make sense for the y-intercept to be negative 12? Okay, so that y-intercept of negative 12, what that actually means is that he had to pay money to for expenses, for costs. He had to maybe buy cups, buy lemonade mix, buy lemonade, lemons. 
Um, so he's starting in the negative values, and then as he sells more and more cups, he makes more and more money or gets closer to the positive values. All right, so let's create our equation here. So y equals mx plus b. y equals my slope, which was $2 every cup, and minus 12 for our y-intercept because we had that initial charge of $12. Okay, so just a refresher. When we are asked to create the equation of a situation, you want to take a second and identify the information, because even if it is a real-world situation, you can use your basic mathematics skills to create the equation of that situation. Identify whether it's linear, a linear situation, if there's a constant rate of change, and see if they give you a coordinate point. If you have a slope and a coordinate point, you could always find your y-intercept by plugging the information in and solving.